Hey travel friends, we just got back from Japan and we brought a serious haul of goods home. So today we wanna do something we've never done before, which is an unboxing. We'll kinda of go through some of these items and also Puppy Basil will be here to uh, approve or disapprove of our purchases. All right, let's get started. Let's start first with one of our many bags of Don Quixote goods. So, one thing Japan is known for are their facial products. So I got a few of these Lulum, Lulu one. Um, these are face masks, sheet masks for your face. They come in a, a pack of seven sheets. They're really good for gifts, but also for yourself. One thing to note, they're resealable, so they're not individually packed. So we got a couple of the red. Got a couple of the pink for pure. So as I mentioned, Japanese no skincare. This is also a cult fave serum. It's called number three. It's the Numbuzin. Again, apologies on pronunciations, but it's a skin softening serum. You can find it at Don Quixote, as well as any other store in all of Japan. The last things we'll unbox are gonna be these hands down cult fave DHC lip cream. These are cheap, they last a long time, and they're very, very good for little gifts and for yourself. All right, next up. Well, I remember when we got these. So we got these in Kyoto. We'll do one at a time. So in Kyoto, you'll get a lot of unique gifts, one of which are handkerchiefs. So this has a geisha embroidered. It's a nice gift for anyone in your family that uses handkerchiefs, as well as a souvenir. We also got another geisha handkerchief. This has the temple that's kind of famous in Kyoto. And then, and tea towels. You want to open that one? Yeah. Then, yeah. So this tea towel really spoke to Jimmy and I. Um, Japan is known for tea towels. There are a lot of different types. There's the tengue towel. This is more of a standard dish towel that you can dry. But it's really cool. It's got ninjas. It's yeah. great. All right. So this is one of the things that Jimmy found. And we got this in Osaka. And when it comes to Japan, they do a lot of things well. And one of them is eyewear. You just have to make sure it fits your face. And Jimmy found some that fit his face very well. So we purchased four pairs of sunglasses in Osaka. These are called Own Days. I think they were about $35 each. They come with a case. They had a lot of different styles. Jimmy knows what he likes, so he typically gets the same style in different colors. So we got kind of a tortoise shell, we have a straight black, um, and then we got another straight black, but these are a little bit bigger. Yeah. And the fourth pair he currently wears, he could not wait. <laughs> Ooh, now this is a souvenir that is also amazing at gifts. We have done a short about this. So there is a place in Tokyo, Japan called Makura. It's actually located on Kitchen Street. It's a well-known street where you can get a lot of fun goods. So what's really cool here is you can go and pick out custom chopsticks. These ones have cats on them. And then you can actually engrave a specific name um, multiple different styles. You can get these for kids, adults, funny gifts, very fancy, um, but anyone who likes chopsticks in your family or friends. All right, we've got a couple little things here. What's really fun about unboxing is it's been a minute since we bought these, so it kind of feels really great to redo it. All right. We know what this is. This is going to be a little sake glass. 
These are really great things to mix and match or give your friends as gifts. And they're also really fun to pick up at markets. I would say the older ones are gonna be anywhere from a dollar to three dollars. The really nice handmade ones, those range anywhere from $30 a sake cup. And we saw a couple that were several hundred. Yeah. So those are kind of like your China sake cups that most people wouldn't utilize. Those are for very fancy days. All right, let's see what this is. Now this has a bell. Basil has perked up. Okay, yeah. so this is this is actually something that really spoke to Jimmy. So we went to the Fushimi Inari um, temple, and this really spoke to Jimmy because he loved the fox. <laughs> the fox is the symbol at Fushimi Inari. So our plan is to actually take off the clip, add a little ribbon, and we can utilize this as an ornament and remember our time in Japan. Yeah. Good find, Jimmy. I'm gonna grab a couple more items here. Oh, these are great. All right. So one of the things that I'm obsessed with doing when, when you go to Japan is when you go to the temples, you get these little tiny charms. For the life of me, I cannot remember the name of what they are in Japanese, so forgive me. But these are some of the best gifts that you can give to family and friends. They're all themed differently. So this is a health charm, health and longevity. This is to give anyone who's maybe battling illness, your grandparents, your parents, anyone that you just want to have a long and healthy life. And it will actually say in Japanese what it does, as well as the temple that you received yeah. it and mm -hmm. purchased it from. We'll go through a couple of these quickly. This is another health charm. This we actually got from the Golden Pavilion in Kyoto. We got this one up in Fuji. Yeah. So if you zoom in, you can kind of see that really good outlook of yeah. the temple with Mount Fuji in the background. Yeah, and that's like the famous view that you go to that temple to see. So I thought that was really, a really cool one. We got this for my grandma. Oh, yeah, it's got one. some yellow or yellow as she pronounces yellow. I had gotten her a health and wellness one five years ago, so I wanted to re-up it. And this one just was really fun and playful yeah, with the balls. Just... The other thing that temples do <laughs> is there's a couple ways that you can do this. Um, this is basically you can write a wish yeah. or like a prayer and you purchase this. You can then write your wish or prayer on the back and you can hang it in the temple. Yeah. We also feel like these are really cool ornaments yeah. to remind you. So we do have a gate already from Fushimi Inari. So yeah. we, we, this one really spoke to Jimmy, if you can't tell the little, little men. <laughs> um, so we did get that yeah. just and saved yeah. it for ourselves. Yep, yeah, this is gonna be an ornament for us. We're gonna have a lot of ornaments in this household. Alrighty. Keep going. All right. I'm gonna... <laughs> so we put all of our goodies in these tote bags. We did not buy the tote bags over there. So, um, yeah. Right. Oh, I remember what these are. Uh, I don't remember this. This is a, a gift. Um, so one benefit of going in the fall is you can actually get your holiday gifts early for family members and friends. Oh. As we unbox, so. No, I remember these, these are yeah, great. Yeah, to go with chopsticks, right? You need chopstick holders. And we got these really cool chopstick holders yeah. for some fun younger people in our family. And each one of these spoke to us. So we've got a sumo wrestler here. A duck person? It's like duck. It was just funny and kind of reminded us of like cartoons and yeah. um, I guess, anime, manga, sure. is that right? Yeah. And then also a ninja. Yeah. So these just kind of like sit on the table and then you rest your uh, chopsticks Yeah, so you on just them. can kind of like set them down and then your chopsticks rest. Yeah. So it brings a little joy to your, your table. Yeah, it's great. I assume you can rest forks and spoons and uh, anything else too, but yeah, they're, they're made to rest your chopsticks. <clears throat> okay. Ooh. So this, this is one of those fancy fancier 
handmade sake glasses. And one of the really oh, yeah. good things to look out for, so we got this in Kyoto. This is actually a Kyoto design. Um, it's something that you'll see a lot when they make their pottery. It almost looks watercolory with little florals, kind of like a crystal. I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah. But some of these places, if there's any imperfection, they will severely discount it. So this one had a slight imperfection just right here in the center. Something that for us, it would never bother us. Yeah. But these cups are, I think, 20 to $30 yeah. each. And we got this for, I think, $9. So big discount. Make sure when you're over there, you keep an eye out for things like this. And it's like pink. <laughs> And we got so many of these, I like forgot what exactly we got. This is great. All right. Oh, Keeping on the sake oh, yeah. glass theme. There's another one. So when you're shopping throughout all of Japan, I'm partial to Kyoto when it comes to sake glasses. They seem to have a lot more options. We got this at an antique shop. You know, there was only one there and we wanted it. We like that mismatch. Yeah. The inside is plain, which is fine, but even look at the detail on the bottom. Yeah. So everything handmade, it's great. easy to hold, cute sake glass. I'm so excited to use these. We've <laughs> been waiting to do this. So, Ooh, oh, this is another, is one. all right. With your sake glasses, you can either go for designs on the inside or designs on the outside. If there are designs on inside and outside, they're a little more expensive. So this is one of those really delicate, yeah. it's very thin, but the inside, all these handwritten characters, um, you've got two people kind of like talking or fighting we really don't know and then the outside also has more simple yeah. kind of landscape yeah this is a great one this is a great one again yeah. it's very delicate porcelain um, compared to some of these other ones that we've unboxed which are a little bit thicker you can kind yeah. of tell uh, obviously bigger size <laughs> let's get into some more beauty products so Don Quixote, if you don't know, you will know. It is a huge store. You can find a lot of things at discount. And I believe it's once you hit the 5,000 yen, you, you hit the, the tax free. So it's usually around $45, $50. Yeah. These are eye patches. Um, I believe that they're just like a hydro, hydro gel eye patch. They lighten and brighten if you're feeling tired. They come 60 eye patches. I believe this was maybe three to five dollars, US dollars. So we got a lot because these are great gifts for all of your gal pals, your mom, anyone that's into beauty. Um, and they look really fancy because they're gold. Okay, I dreamed about these once I ran out. Uh, we smashed the box for it to fit. These are eye masks that heat up. So if you think of hand warmers, think of that for your eyes with a lavender scent. So it hooks around your ears. If you travel a lot or if you have trouble sleeping, or maybe you've had a stressful week, these will help put you to sleep and it's just delicious. So they come 12 pack per box. And as you'll see, as we go through, I believe I got four or five boxes. Wrapping up this Don Quixote bag is again, sheet masks. So this I believe was under $10. These are niacinamide sheet face masks. There's 30 sheets in here. So it's a resealable bag, shows you how to use it. Um, you can just translate, Google Translate if needed. One thing I'll remind everyone is you can't divvy these up. It's all in one. So it, it's either for you or a gift, but it's not individually, not packed. individually wrapped. Yeah. Okay. I know you all have been tempted by this box. 
So one of the things that everyone should be aware of is when you go to Japan, their sneaker game is lit. And they do have a really good resale market as well. So not only can you get brand new shoes, you can also get brand new resale unique shoes. So I'm talking your specific Nike, Jordans, etc. Air Jordans. I did not get any J's this trip, but I did get a brand new pair. Um, and one of the places to look out for is going to be ABC Mart. ABC Mart has a lot of good shoes, not just Nikes, but all of the name brands at a big steep discount. So I'm a white sneaker Nike fan. Shout out to Purdue. They're also Boilermaker colors, but I got a pair of these. Um, I believe tax-free, they rounded out to be like 50 or $60 US dollars. So some, uh, sometimes you'll get a really great discount. Other times it's just enough, but again, it's tax-free. So if you are into the sneaker game, you will find a lot of really unique yeah. shoes that you might not be able to find in the US. These are more mainstream. We're pulling out the big guns now. So <clears throat> when you go to Japan, as I mentioned, their resale market for designer goods is phenomenal. So I did get this purse. This is a resale, um, but it looks like it's never been used. And I don't know if it has. <laughs> um, we, Jimmy and I scoured over this for a long time to see if we could find any damage, especially because it's white but this is your neverfull so this is your louis vuitton neverfull bag it also comes with a little pouch again really cute you can use as a wallet a clutch but overall spotless spotless and tax-free at a discount we saved i saved a lot of money <laughs> i will say that so if you're looking into nice designer goods that are very either gently used or you just can't even tell that they're used, yeah. definitely keep an eye out for resale. Also, they have a lot of unique purses. So you might pay a premium, they might actually be priced higher, but you might not be able to find them anywhere else. Yeah. Speaking of resale, one of the things that everyone should know is thrift shopping in Japan. Don't let anyone gatekeep you on this. So in Kyoto, I found this vintage Chicago Bear sweatshirt. And this was just too good to pass up. Jimmy and I both have lived in Chicago. I have family in Chicago. And it was just great. Good quality, good price. So I got this. Sidebar, when we were in that store, I also saw a sweatshirt from my high school the year I graduated, which is crazy. Um, we found out that a lot of these owners at thrift, shop, thrift shops, they actually come to the US and they grab stuff from our thrift shops, bring them over to Japan. So it made me giggle that I brought this back to the US. Another thing, I don't know if this constitutes thrift shopping. So yeah, this is actually not. more of just souvenir clothing shopping but you can get some really cool designs when you're in Japan. So in Osaka, this sweatshirt really spoke to Jimmy, not because of the front, yeah, but because of the back. <laughs> Who can pass up a happy dino that yeah. says Osaka? That's great. Love to travel as Jimmy does. And then on the side, there is like a hashtag Osaka. Osaka. Yeah. So again, you can some really fun, cool, yeah, memorable, memorable items that you can wear. And that's one of the best souvenirs, yeah. those wearable souvenirs. Yeah. And we, we rarely shop for like clothes or any stuff when we travel. So yeah. this was a, a good exception. It was fun. For sure. All right. Ooh. Let's get into some ceramics. Japan has some amazing pottery and ceramic. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of unique artists, little stores. Um, so it's almost like you're going into individual studios, which is really cool. You can also find these things in bigger shops where you'll walk in. Maybe if you're in one of like the malls, 
and there will be thousands of items for you to choose from. Jimmy, do you want to talk about this? Let me see this one. I forget if this one was one. Yeah, I think like, I think this is one more of like the handmade one items that we got. So we got this for sushi. Um, and I think a lot of times you can tell the handmade stuff, there are like imperfections, nothing's like perfect. Um, we'll compare and contrast some of the other ones, but this is like one of our sushi plates that we got. It was one of the items that we were looking for to, you know, up our sushi game here uh, from Japan. So I think these are gonna be really, really fun to use. On that note, let me open um, another one. So we did get this one in a mall. It was, um, it was handmade, um, but it was from a bigger store where they had a lot of items from sake glasses to plates. Uh, oh yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one to compare and contrast because this one is more of like mass made. Mm -hmm. like, like you can tell there's, it's uh, uh, you know, a little simpler. There's less imperfections or like no imperfections. It's mass made. And then also I think if you look at the bottom, I'm not sure if this is necessarily true, but what I found is that like a lot of the mass made ones, they have, kind of have this like really, you know, regular. It's, it perfectly sits. Whereas this one, when we set it down, it right. wobbles a little because this yeah. is a little shorter. This so, is a little longer. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, it's with the Japanese culture or idea of that, you know, the, the perfection and the imperfection or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, I really, I really like the unique ones. And just know that like there's a really significant price difference. Like this one was like a few dollars and this one was like what, 20, 30 or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, Jimmy stumbled upon this man and his oh, yeah. pottery store. And when we're talking, this is more unique than this, which is more unique than this. So Wait, we- say, say that again? Yep, so this plate is more unique than this plate, Yeah. which is, way more unique than this yeah, plate. Yeah. So we were able to go into this man's pottery store. Um, he welcomed us in with open arms, walked us through, let us look at all of his pottery. It's Aokabo, it's in Fuji area. It's a little bit off the beaten path. So if you don't have a car, it would be hard to get there. Yeah, see, like it's just, um, I don't know. This one was the most expensive of the three and you know, I think you're you're paying for the artisan, the craft, um, and again, you know, like I think like there's there's something fun and organic about something that's irregular, that's not perfect. I don't know if this thing wobbles or not. It probably doesn't. I think we we all, we kind of saw all these on a on a like a table, but um, we you know we, we this... have a few more too. So oh, just yeah. to show you, I think this one actually is our most expensive one. Oh, and yeah. it's from the same place that it's the same pottery from Fuji. And this hands down was the most expensive and oh, yeah. you will see why as we unwrap. Oh, yeah. yeah, this was, yeah, this was hands down the most expensive piece we got. Um, and this one was, I'll hold it. oh yeah, this one, you know, like this, you know, lots of, I don't know if you, yeah, I guess it would call it imperfection, but like irregularities. Um, it's also just the glaze. Yeah. Um, and we just, yeah, it's just like a, a really special piece that, you know, we, we kind of stumbled up upon the studio and we just kind of, kind of fell in love with that piece. And I think you can find a lot of similar things or similar opportunities all over Japan in terms of like anything that you're looking for. If you're looking for something like really, really affordable. Um, and you know mass produced like it's just like these there's there's definitely a, a place for you know items like these because there's just like so so much cheaper whereas a lot of these unique pieces can be a lot more expensive than you know what you're looking for or what you'll you'll appreciate we have one more plate and i think one thing to to add on to what jimmy's saying is some of these can be found on like kitchen streets where restaurants so this to us does look like something that would be at a restaurant yeah, yeah. whereas these probably wouldn't be at a restaurant yeah. because restaurants usually have a specific aesthetic this is another i think this is our oh, yeah. second most expensive plate um we actually purchased this in kyoto we got this with that really pretty pink sake glass 
when we were in Kyoto. And again, this goes off of the Kyoto style pottery. Ooh. And this yeah. is just, this is just gorgeous. Yeah. So I, I believe this was maybe our most expensive piece. No, I, actually, I think, I think this one, I think this one was, was our, our most expensive piece actually. Okay. And I think that, that might second have been our second most. Second most expensive most, yeah. piece. But you can see like, there's such a, a good variety. Like the ombre. You know, like there's basically that yeah, such, such good variety over there. Um, we focused on these like sushi serving trays because that's what we were looking for. Um, but you know, if you're looking for bowls, you know, small bowls, big bowls, basically any sort of pottery or ceramic thing, um, very, very fun to, to look around for in Japan. For sure. This is another gift. So there's actually two items in it. Mm. So this is the gift. And these are actually sumo wrestler chopsticks. So these are really fun. Obviously chopsticks as a gift are really fun, but if you're giving them to maybe a younger member of your family, middle school, high school, you kind of want to get it themed with what they might enjoy. And what young teenager does not enjoy sumo wrestler chopsticks? <laughs> Very affordable, I think five to ten dollars yeah. usd yeah, um you'll definitely want these are mass produced so be aware of that but you'll want to make sure that when you are looking that you did get like a good pair sometimes there are some flaws which is why they could yeah. be listed a little cheaper sticking with the chopstick theme jimmy and i's goal when we were going over to japan was to as he says up our sushi game we do eat sushi a lot and we wanted to also get a usable souvenir that we'll always remember our 2023 trip to Japan. So, oh, yeah. we ended up splurging a little bit on these chopsticks, and I still feel we should have gotten more. Yeah, we probably should have. We should have. So, we went a little bit more um, classic with black, but these are those more thin yeah. chopsticks. Um, so it's like you're you're gonna pay more if the chopsticks are handmade, mm -hmm. and also like these thinner tips, um, they they tend to cost a lot a lot more. So the chopsticks that are a lot more delicate, mm -hmm. um, you know, it just I think it just takes more craftsmanship to to make them, and you're gonna pay a, a good price for them. But but goodness, they they feel very yeah. luxurious. They're light. <laughs> um, Again, yeah. because they're handmade, they're all custom. This black kind of embossed enamel yeah. is just very nice. Yeah. As with all wood items that you get in Japan or anywhere, you will need to hand wash these. Yeah. I think it's it's hard to appreciate probably on camera about like how delicate um, and refined some of the these chopsticks are. I can open a pair. Um, yeah. But when you're over there, you will notice a significant difference. Some of these chopstick stores, you have chopsticks that are very expensive. You also have chopsticks for every occasion, whether it's noodles, sushi, you're learning. They have different lengths for men and women, which is really smart. Yeah. Yeah, so... You know, you, I think we can, let's, let's see if we can uh, open the box and compare. Yeah. So when you're comparing just size and thickness, see how thin these are? Yeah. See, it's, it's... All the way down to the end. Yeah. These are also more advanced chopsticks. Probably. You'll notice these have the, the, the grooves. Gr the grooves help you grip food. Yeah. So if you are a good chopstick user... These will be for you, yeah. especially because they yeah. they take a little more skill. Yeah, I would say that you know it's I would probably be one of the last people to spend quite a lot of money on chopsticks, but I you know we we eat sushi and we use chopsticks quite a bit, so I think it's it's just fun to spend a little bit more to especially on items that you're really enjoying on a very regular basis. Mm -hmm. 
one. Okay, this is another gift. Luckily, I don't think our parents watch too often. They <laughs> should watch more. So we purchased this in Mount Fuji area. Oh, and yes, I remember this one. To give it away, my father wears a tie every single day. He loves ties. So I've always purchased him a tie wherever we go. And this is just a beautiful silk tie with little Mount Fujis. But if you look very closely, they also have cherry blossoms. So it's a nice light pink with a blue gray for the Mount yeah. Fuji. Um, this was it a great, is, great one. It's 100% silk. Yeah. It's also made in that area. And so Japan is also known for silk. So if, uh, if you are looking for anything silk, whether it be shawls, scarves, or ties, yeah. It's a great place to get very good quality that was, um, gifts. Yeah, that was a great one. That was like one of our best purchases, I think. I'm so glad we found it. Yeah, it was, it was a very good find. Okay. All right. Oh, yes. So another addition to our sushi game. We've got some more ceramics and pottery here. So as you can tell, compared to some of our other ceramic pieces, this is more on the mass produced side. We were able to get six of them. They all look pretty identical. We love the pattern. It really spoke to us where it's unique enough, but yeah. still can go with everything. Um, yeah, and these were like really, really affordable for what they were, right? And mm -hmm. we kind of felt like we didn't need to spend a lot of money on artisanal one of a kind Soy, soy sauce, sauce holders yeah. versus other items. Yeah, so these were, um, yeah, they just kind of fit the right balance of what we were looking for in terms of something that spoke to us, something a little special, um, but functional and also very affordable. And we'd been looking for these soy sauce holders for over half of our trip and finally <laughs> found them. I believe it was in Kyoto, um, our last day in Kyoto. So it was a, it was good. a good find yeah. for us to, to, to decide on something that we really enjoyed. This is something that brings Jimmy a lot of joy. Can I open this? Uh, yeah, let's open this one. Okay. So in Japan, they are known to have, and I might be pronouncing this incorrectly, so forgive me, tengue, which are basically Japanese kind of tea towels. But they're so unique that you can actually hang them as art. So we found this tengue, and... <laughs> If you come a little closer first before I unravel it, you'll see that it's very thin and one of the things that it's known for is these rough edges. So it's not gonna be a perfect cut edge. They're also not gonna be double thick. They're just, they're supposed to look like that. They're supposed to kind of unravel a little bit yeah. with use. Now, tengues come in different sizes. Yeah. Yeah, we got this so we got this primarily as an art piece. So you're supposed to iron it out and then you frame it and look at it, it looks awesome. It does look awesome. The colors are so vivid. Yeah. Uh, once we iron it and frame it, it'll go up on our art wall. But you can also get other ones that are maybe less aggressive as this, <laughs> or um, they actually had a, some really great ones, like one was with geisha, playing right. sports, all yeah, of that. Yeah. So you will probably find one that fits your taste. Yeah. And again, you can also use these as a tea towel, yeah. uh, just to show off and hang like yeah. so on your oven or anything like that. Yeah, I think they, like if you're looking for art, I think these are very affordable mm -hmm. art pieces. Um, probably the most expensive thing that you're gonna have to find is the framing for it. Yeah. <laughs> and some do sell it with a frame. Yeah. Just be aware you saw how big this is. That's going to be kind of hard to transfer back to wherever your home is. Yeah. This is actually something where you pay, I believe we paid three to 500 yen. Which is like two to three dollars. Three, yeah, three, three, three to four dollars. Yeah. Um, and it's actually a wish. So you'll see this rope here, but you are supposed to break it open and there's a fortune inside. So a lot of the temples do fortunes. We decide to forego our fortune because this is really cute and it'll just kind of hang like this on our Christmas tree. Yep. We are now going to pick random items as we go. 
Basil is very intrigued. So thank you for bearing with us this whole time. First off, we're back into a Don Quixote bag. So Don Quixote, again, they have everything. Not only beauty products, but they have electronics. They also sell designer goods, which is crazy. But we did get the new iPhone 15 right before we went to Japan and I needed some new cables. So we did get some new cables that work um, so that we can charge, um, use them in a car, anything like that. Really cute colors. Cult fave alert, hair masks. So these are the Fino hair mask. It's a um, just sensational, everyone says to get it. So we got two, uh, primarily for women or if you have long hair as a man, um, use it for your hair. It's like a deep conditioning hair mask. Let's hope it works wonders. Switching gears. Oh, it's so funny. Once you touch something, you're like, oh, I know exactly what this is. But when oh, it's in I wrapping, remember that. You don't know. I remember this. This is great. All right. So we are back on some ceramics again. Excited to hear your guys' thoughts on some of our purchases. If you like them. Yeah. Or if you think we're just over-purchasing, which we are. But that exchange rate right now. Now, we got these as little kind of sushi plates to move from the bigger sushi plate to a little sushi plate. Now, we got two sets of four, or sorry, two sets of two. Oh, yeah. And this was from um, a higher end store in the Gion district in Kyoto. Yeah. And these just spoke to us. So we, we got two of this style and again you can tell they're handmade with the glaze mm -hmm. really pretty and these are the other two. Oh yeah and this is really great it's fall leaves but you kind of get a touch of that gold shimmer Oh yeah, I forgot how much these spoke to us. Yeah. These look great. And there's something about them that really, it's just so Japan. I think mm. it's the leaves, um, also the gold shimmer, the fact that you can tell it's hand painted. Yeah, um, it's great. We're very excited to have friends over for, for sushi so that we can show them all of our goodies. We're gonna open this. Ooh. So we purchased this on Kitchen Street and I'm gonna let Jimmy talk more about this as I unbox it. Um, Maybe where we got it. So on Kitchen Street, the reason why we went there prim primarily was to look for just authentic Japanese knives, uh, mostly well, mostly for the kitchen. <laughs> and um, I would say like a lot of the knives, it's kind of hard to find one under like $100 USD if you're looking for like a really authentic knife that's handmade over there. Um, but, you know, we found this one. It, it just kind of look, had that look that we like, the shape that we like, and it was just like very comfortable. Um, and this particular place uh, engraved it for us. I'm not sure if we can see the engraving. Uh, let me see if I can. There we go. A little bit of the engraving. Uh, and so they engraved it for us. Um, yeah. Very, very, very fun, memorable piece. And I think this one, what? How much does this one cost us? I forgot. It's like 150 it had or something? Been at least 150 it might have been a little bit 150 more. 150 to 180 or something? Yeah. I think the other thing we should talk about is the, the blade. Yeah. Uh, so the Japanese knives, once you look into them, there's different blade shapes um, depending on the purpose. Um, I forgot what this one is predominantly used for. I think this is more of like a multi, closer to multi-purpose. We bought it 
Um, again, to not so much, I already have a sushi knife. Mm -hmm. This one's sort of to, um, I guess, more, just more a general knife uh, use, uh, mostly for meats, fish. Um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to yeah. be really fun to use. Uh, I think these, one... sorry, go ahead. Oh, are you going to talk about the metal? Um, yeah, the, just know that like the metal for, uh, the Japanese knives, usually they tend to rust a little bit more. They're not stainless steel or this one isn't. You can get some stainless steel knives mm -hmm. that don't rust so much. Um, but these, you kind of do have to care for them a little bit more or I would say a whole lot more mm -hmm. uh, to prevent rusting. I think the one thing to say with like the stainless steel, if you are looking for a, a statement piece for your kitchen that you'll use, that's also just a conversation starter. Mm. You want to go, is it carbon steel? Mm -hmm. or, yeah, these right? are like, this. I think this one's a blue carbon steel. Blue carbon steel. Um, and you want to do that because if you go for the stainless steel, it's, it just really lacks a lot of uniqueness. Like you kind of lose the Japanese feel yeah. of the knife. Yeah, but I would, I would definitely research, do your research before you get, get one of these because, uh, again, they're, they tend to be at the higher price point. Mm -hmm. And also, um, if you're not prepared to care for them and sh sharpen them, it's, it's probably... A waste of money. Yeah, it might be a little bit disappointing. Yeah. But the engraving is really cool. We actually engraved this uh, Japan 2023. Yeah. So that we remember our trip. And again, you can find that like all the knives. Yeah, this was the This, this was is the from store. Kamata. So this is the the store Kamata, which is a it's like a really really famous knife store over there. And you can find so many knife stores on Kitchen Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't just go into one and buy definitely go into a few to see what speaks to you. Yeah. So we got a lot of ceramics and a lot of glasses, but this was something that I'm very excited about because I looked high and low for something <laughs> that spoke to me, spoke to us. And this may seem frivolous, but this is, this is a soy sauce pourer. So I'll unwrap the lid. I, I would say that unless you eat sushi a lot and we eat sushi a lot, I would say we eat sushi about once a week, if not, um, yeah, probably once a week. Uh, you probably don't need this, but if you do eat sushi a lot, <laughs> it'd be, it's just like a fun, unique... Oh, oh. <laughs> it's a fun... Yeah. Pour it's um, hopefully the light lighting is good. It's kind of a gray. I'll take the top. It's kind of a gray black with a blue glaze cutting through. Yeah. So again, fun, unique, and will definitely bring us joy as we're pouring. Yeah. Our soy sauce. Now I'll unwrap these pretty quickly because they're all three similar or the same thing. Um, one of the great spots to find sake glasses are going to be the markets because the markets will have a lot of different styles. Maybe there's only one of them. It's not so much mass produced. Some of them may be older. So oh. this was a really, oh, it still brings me joy. I remember when we found this. So the inside is this kind of jade green and then the outside has just little designs on it. Yeah, this is a great one. So that was really fun. We actually found this at a market that is every month on the 25th at one of the big temples in Kyoto. Yeah, it's a really unique one. This one also kind of reminds us of our time in Fuji. We did get this in Kyoto, but look at the details on the inside. So again, usually if it's really detailed on the inside, it's gonna be a little more simple on the outside. And then this is our last one. This is a bigger glass. Very detailed on the outside. Yeah. We tried to find something that is just, you know, a little, a little different to add to our collection so that our collection has 
a good a good variety. It was great. I think we're at like maybe 10 sake <laughs> cups at this point. You will never believe what is in this black bag from Second Street. So Second Street is a, they call it a reuse shop. Um, so it's not only thrifting, but also designer goods. So this is actually a wallet Jimmy currently has. We looked in Paris at this exact wallet because what he really likes is this money clip. Yeah, it's like you can clip your dollars and whatever else in there. It's very light. I have a, a much older version that's wearing out. Yeah. And we've been looking for this everywhere. Um, and we found this basically perfect per condition. Um, perfect condition. Yeah. Tax-free. Tax-free and hundreds of dollars cheaper than if he bought it new. Yeah. And again, it is, it's not, this is the current version that yeah. they are selling. We were actually in the Prada store in Paris last year. Um, yeah. And so, again, don't underestimate the resale shops yeah. for yeah. practically perfect yeah. goods at a discount. I think it really surprised us, uh, the quality of their resale shops. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think if we found designer goods anywhere else, we would just like assume that they're fake or Especially counterfeit. Especially in the US, yeah. Yeah, so this is not something we routinely do, but in Japan, it's, it's, it's really a thing. So, um, yeah. We travel a lot. And when we travel, we look for art. So we usually, this is one of Jimmy's things, we usually spend a day yeah. set aside or we build it specifically into our day to find pieces of art that really speak to us about the trip. As you can see, we have an art wall behind us. It also has to be affordable. <laughs> it does have to be affordable. But when you look for affordable art, you can usually find it. Yeah. And I think a lot of it's more, does it speak to us? And this piece <laughs> spoke. So we found this at an art shop and we were in that art shop for probably 30 to 45 minutes, yeah. just going through thousands of pieces of art. Now, some of the ones we liked were just too big, yeah. but for some reason, this round man really speaks to us. <laughs> yeah. And there's a couple of things that are truly Japanese about it. So one is like the Honko stamp. So when you have the Honko stamps, that's just kind of a one of a kind stamp. A lot of people use their Honko stamp as their signature uh, for any official government documents and so forth. This one was unique, but also within our price range. Yeah. And it was about, um, it was 5,000 yen. All right, let's open this. I thought this was open, but. Unboxing ASMR. Okay, so these are all the same item. So if you deal with tired, droopy eyes, this will help you. <laughs> your face. Uh, basically, these are eye creams. Again, cult fave, brightening, lifting. You can put it on. Um, they come in, they're really easy, like small tubes. Um, and also, they're really pretty affordable. I, I think each one's $10. Um, I got a few of these because it also came with a face sheet mask. So these are really great for gifts because it not only has the eye cream, but you're also giving them a face mask as well. As you know, if you've been watching this video to here, Japan is very good at designer goods and resale. This is a gift. Um, we actually found this in a Hermes only boutique, all resale items. This is an Hermes scarf, never been worn. The tags are actually still on the scarf, the original tags. Um, and again, it was still discounted. And if you look at the retail of some of these items in the U S 
I, you're losing money if you didn't purchase this. But again, one of the benefits of buying things at reuse or resale shops are that you're getting beautiful, good quality, unique items that you might not be able to find where you live. All right, we're down to our, our, our last couple items here. So rounding out all of our ceramics, when we found this lovely man's pottery shop and purchased some of his art or his pottery, he also gave us these two items. Now, typically what we believe these are used for is a lot of the incense um, because they're not deep enough for soy, but uh, in Japan they do like to burn a lot of little incense things. This can also be used as a trinket dish as well, uh, but they're really beautiful. They do go with the same style of artwork that we purchased from him. You can tell they're handmade. They're beautiful glaze on top. They're a little um, rough where the glaze ends at the bottom. Similar to here, you can tell where the glaze is. Same style, different edges, still unique. So little trinket dish for rings, jewelry, anything like that. All right, the last thing is the big kahuna. So I've been waiting to finish opening this. Now, I know we've been talking a lot about resale and reuse shops. This is an item that we did get at the Louis Vuitton store. We actually purchased it in Kyoto. So designer goods, the big cities in Japan will be the best places to go. So Tokyo, Kyoto, as well as Osaka. Um, and to unveil this one, <laughs> he's very scared of it. So I decided to splurge a little bit and get a tote that I can use for work um, that'll fit my computer while still being a classic item. Uh, so again, we got this brand new, tax-free, but it's just a, a lovely tote and with the exchange rate over there, if you are looking for any designer goods, highly recommend purchasing it in Japan, carrying it back, it'll be tax free. The exchange rate right now for USD as well as the Euro is phenomenal. Japan's been closed for three years. They just opened in spring of 2023 and they want all the tourists to come and buy goods. So we feel, if you've watched this whole video, that we did our job. We brought the most souvenirs and goods back from any trip we've ever done in our lives. And we were actually talking about going back again. So before we even left Japan, we started planning our next Japan trip. So again, this was the big kahuna, um, beautiful Louis Vuitton. But overall, if you've learned anything from this video, the items that you can wear and use that remind you of your trip are the best souvenirs. And Japan is loaded with those. So let us know your thoughts below. We'll definitely do some more videos to break out the different items that we purchased. And let us know if we missed any. We hope we didn't, but we definitely probably missed a few souvenirs. So now we definitely have to go back. All right. Happy travels.